Hey, I'm Dr. Morales and thanks for checking out this video. In this video, I'm going to discuss AFib with RVR. I'm going to discuss what that means, what is the significance of it, how it feels, and ultimately how it's treated as well. Make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to discuss ways in which I can help you with AFib with RVR no matter where you live. So what is AFib with RVR? You may have gotten some paperwork either from your doctor's office or from the hospital and it says, you were diagnosed with AFib with RVR and what does that really mean? So first, for the actual term itself, AFib of course means atrial fibrillation, but then RVR stands for rapid ventricular rate. That's basically a fancy medical way to say that your heart was going fast. And most people, not everybody, but most people who have AFib, the heart rate actually tends to go very fast. So if your heart rate was going faster than 100 beats per minute, you would be called that you had AFib with RVR as opposed to AFib with controlled ventricular rate or CVR means that your heart rate is under 100 usually between 60 and, and 100 and there's the occasional people who have AFib with slow rates which are less than 60 that would be a slow ventricular rate but the grand majority of people have AFib with RVR when they're having episodes of AFib especially when the episodes come and go when you get into AFib, that heart rate shoots up to, to well over 100 beats per minute. So AFib with RVR, as you would imagine, uh, basically feels like your heart rate's going very fast. Uh, the atria in AFib with RVR are actually going very fast. The upper parts of the heart, which is where the AFib comes from, the AFib is usually going well over 600 beats per minute. Fortunately, the pulse, the one that you can kind of detect and feel and, and check for, actually comes from the ventricles, which is the bottom part of the heart. And fortunately, the ventricles don't usually go that fast, as fast as the atria going during AFib with RVR, but they can go very rapid. They're not uncommonly to be between 120 and 150, and there are some cases where it gets really, really fast. It goes 180, close to 200 beats per minute. And so some people can become extremely rapid when they get atrial fibrillation with, with RVR. So what does that actually feel like? What does it feel like to have AFib with RVR? Well, the most common feeling would be that your heart rate just starts going really fast. Uh, for most people who are not in AFib all the time, uh, they may have a nice, steady, normal heartbeat in the normal rhythm of about 60 to 70 beats per minute. Then all of a sudden, shoom, that heart rate goes up and it goes real fast and it just some people say that it feels like their heart just like explodes and just starts going very fast even though you're not really doing anything at that time your heart you're not exercising or doing anything that would naturally give you a fast heart rate it just all of a sudden goes very fast described as a very fast pounding or pounding heart heart rate sometimes it can skip and stutter a little bit and if, if some people describe that as a flip flopping it's kind of just all over the place and it's not really going steady fast but it's kind of going fast and slow fast and slow fast and slow so those are common ways that people can feel AFib with RVR uh, but some people just don't necessarily feel that heart rate going fast some people just may feel very dizzy or lightheaded because of the lack of circulation or blood flow uh, to your brain because your heart's going so incredibly fast or sometimes people may feel just kind of tired you know because of this kind of that lack of energy kind of the way you're tired after you exercise or your heart's going really fast you can just might have, feel tired feeling some people may feel feel very short short of breath and that's kind of that shortness of breath is actually your symptom of your afib with rvr even though it's not necessarily the heart rate going fast that you feel it's just that kind of shortness of breath because your heart's going going so fast and then of course there's also people who feel absolutely nothing so there's some people who have afib with rvr and they couldn't tell you at all that they were having and it's just kind of found incidentally when you go into either a doctor's office or you have a heart monitor put in and you're noticing that you're getting these episodes of AFib with RVR. So how is AFib with RVR treated? Uh, let's talk about in the short-term treatment for AFib with RVR. Short-term the main way is to reduce the hurry and especially if you're in in the emergency room setting or in a hospital setting uh, and you're showing up with your heart rate going extremely fast 120 or above uh, most likely you'll be getting intravenous medications to slow your heart rate down which is usually step number one uh, the most commonly used medications in the emergency room setting would likely be intravenous metoprolol or 
Cartizam, uh, which are both uh, blood pressure medications which tend to slow the heart rate down. And they work pretty quickly and they're very good medications to use. Uh, however, they can uh, affect blood pressure. There are blood pressure medications as well. So there are some people who show up that the heart rate is so fast that their blood pressure is actually compensating and very low. And so your blood pressure may be in the low 90s or low 100s. And a lot of times these normally used medications like metoprol or cardizam are just too strong and it's going to make that blood pressure get even lower. And so they're usually not a good option for somebody who has rapid heart rate as well as a very low blood pressure. In those settings, other intravenous uh, options can be a medication called uh, digoxin, uh, which is an intravenous medication which can slow the heart rate down. It does take a little while to kick in, usually about a few hours to really notice an, an effect from, from the intravenous digoxin. And but the one of the most commonly ones used, especially in a hospital setting or emergency setting, would be intravenous amiodarone. Amiodarone is a medication that will slow your heart rate down and can potentially convert somebody out of atrial fibrillation as well. And, it's, and it doesn't really affect blood pressure very much, and that's why it's probably the most commonly used uh, in the an emergency room setting or hospital setting because it's given intravenously, slows the heart rate down, it really doesn't affect blood pressure, and in a short-term setting, it can actually be a very useful uh, med medication. I use it quite a lot in hospital patients. Uh, however, long-term, many of you may know that amiodarone is, used, is associated with a lot of long-term use side effects, and so even though people may be discharged with it in pill form, uh, usually after a few weeks or so, I'm working to try to get uh, somebody off of that medication. But with, when you have AFib with RVR and you're in the hospital, intravenous amiodarone is probably the one of the most commonly used uh, medications. So those four medications are used to co control the heart rate and slow it down. Um, the IV amiodarone, however, that can also potentially convert the AFib and actually stop it completely as well since it's more of an antiarrhythmic type of medication. There are other antiarrhythmic medications as well that can be used, uh, but they're mostly all otherwise in pill form. Um, other medications such as uh, flecainide, uh, sotalol, uh, dofetilide, uh, these can all be used and potentially stop atrial fibrillation episodes. Uh, particularly flecainide can be used as a pill at home uh, that can actually help stop AFib with RER episodes. It's actually a technique and strategy called pill in the pocket where you would actually take a high dose of flecainide, usually about 150 milligrams or up to 200 milligrams at one time and see if it can actually stop your AFib episodes. So the goal is not to necessarily slow down the AFib as it is with some of the other intravenous medications, but to actually potentially stop the episode of, a, of AFib. And always check with your doctor to see if that's a safe strategy uh, with you to use for your AFib with RVR. In addition, there's even some uh, strategies that you can even do at home that can stop episodes of AFib with RVR. Probably one of the most commonly ones used would be what's called vagal maneuvers. Vagal maneuvers are when you kind of try to activate your vagus nerve, which is, helps to slow your heart rate down. Um, one of the most common ones used would be called what's called a Valsalva maneuver. A Valsalva maneuver is where you try to basically uh, bear down um, and while, while, you, while you're holding your breath, kind of like what you have when you're having a bowel movement, but it can uh, rapidly stop some uh, arrhythmias, including AFib. So you basically just take a deep breath and kind of push down, kind of like you're having a bowel movement, and just kind of see if you can uh, hold it as long as you can and see if it, that can stop an AFib episode. Other ways to slow your heart rate down would be carotid massage. If you have AFib with RVR, the carotid massage is where you basically try to rub the, your carotid neck. There's actually another a great lot of inputs for the vagus nerve right around here where you feel the most pulse of, of the carotid uh, 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 artery right here, right next to it is where all the nerves are, and you basically just kind of push down on it and massage it for a good minute or so. You can also alternate and go to, to the other side as well, uh, but don't do both at the same time, of course. Yeah, but do one, and then try, you can always try the other one as well. That can also uh, slow your heart rate down as well. Other things you can do at home for AFib with RVR actually include uh, yoga and breathing exercises, but mostly geared towards ones that are more rea relaxation brace. So try taking uh, deep breaths. Um, there are a lot of great relaxation based uh, uh, yoga instructors on, you on YouTube that kind of give you nice uh, long breathing exercise ways to relax and help us try to slow, slow your heart rate down. Another interesting one is called a diver's reflex. Uh, a diver's reflex is basically when you put your 
face in something extremely cold, like a bucket of, of cold uh, water, and you just submerge your ice and that your head and your face in that uh, really cold water, and that can actually activate your vagus nerves as well and slow, slow your heart rate down. Uh, another way that you can potentially treat AFib with RVR at home uh, would actually be to uh, exercise. And this is actually something that I'm not 100% sure how it works, but I've had countless patients uh, do it. So obviously, make sure that you're somebody who can actually exercise on a normal basis. But I've had people who say, oh, if I get in the AFib with RVR, if I go for a run or go up da and downstairs, something that's really, really kind of strenuous cardiovascularly, it will stop my AFib episodes. And so I've had quite a few people who have, who have been successfully able to terminate their AFib with RVR episodes like that. And so those are the ways that you can potentially stop the AFib episodes uh, at home. Uh, or as well as how they treat it in the emergency room as well. Obviously, long term, you know, you don't want to have AFib with RVR episodes. So there's many ways that you can treat AFib in the bigger picture to try to prevent and minimize episodes of AFib with RVR. Medications are always options. Uh, there are pill forms of either beta blockers or even antiarrhythmic medications, which can be great for some patients uh, that can help reduce the amount of AFib with RVR episodes that you're having. In addition, procedures can be helpful as, as well. A procedure such as a cardioversion shock, which can be useful in the short term, like if you're in the hospital and your AFib is, is not going away, uh, you may be able to do a cardioversion, which is an electrical shock of your heart, uh, to kind of help reset your heart and get, get you out of AFib with RER. But then long term, uh, ablation procedures can be a very good option to reduce how much AFib you're having. Uh, in an ablation procedure, a, a doctor like myself uh, does strategic burn marks in the left upper chamber of your heart, which is where most AFib comes from. Uh, and that long term can certainly reduce how much AFib episodes that, that you're having. In addition, lifestyle modifications, including weight loss, removing artificial in ingredients, uh, removing uh, preservatives, uh, keeping your food as natural as possible, reducing and minimizing alcohol. All these lifestyle modifications can play a crucial role to uh, improve and reduce episodes of AFib with RVR, which is why I created the Take Control Over AFib program. The Take Control Over AFib program is my own video course where I give you a step-by-step -step plan and guide to help you apply all the things lifestyle-wise into your into your life to help improve and reduce atrial fibrillation. So right underneath this video, there's going to be a link to the Take Control of AFib program where you can learn more about the program, learn more about what's included, as well as see testimonial videos of people who have actually signed up and taken the program, see what they have to say, and see if it's the right option for you. But I wish you the best with your AFib, and with, hopefully with these tips, you can help reduce your AFib with RVR episodes.